Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway. I'm the author of several history books and also the founder of the Tudor Society and Anne Boleyn Foles websites. Now, you may be wondering where I am today because it's not my usual background. Well, I've had to move into my office. This is actually the room where I work, all my books behind me, um, because we're having building work done in the house. Quite a few of you have asked for tours of my house because I mentioned about how it was uh, 364 years old. But believe me, you would not want to see it at the moment. There is just stuff everywhere. So sorry about that. Okay, I'm going to take you back today to 1563, so that's in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. For it was on this day in Tudor history, the 19th of March 1563, that translator and poet Arthur Brooke and Sir Thomas Finch, who was Queen Elizabeth I's newly appointed Knight Marshal, both died when the ship they were travelling in, the ship was bound for Le Havre, um, sank. This, this ship was called the Greyhound and it sank off the coast of Rye in East Sussex and they were both drowned in the sinking. Now you're probably thinking why, why am I drawing attention to these two men today? Well I'm actually drawing attention to Arthur Brooke. And you're thinking, who on earth, Claire, is Arthur Brooke? Well, Arthur Brooke was actually well known in his lifetime as a translator and poet. Sorry, the dog's just having a scratch now, as they do. Hard to have cameos today, but uh, scratching dogs in the background. But this man should be known, really, to... For us today as well because he produced the first version in English of the story of Romeo and Juliet, the um, those famous star-crossed lovers um, who of course we know uh, from William Shakespeare's work, not Arthur Brooke's work. But his 3020 line poem, The Tragical History of Romeo and Juliet, written first in Italian by Bandel and now in English by Arthur Brooke, love those long titles that the Tudors gave their works, was printed in 1562. And it was used, this was the main source for William Shakespeare's more famous play, Romeo and Juliet. So Shakespeare gets all the credit because of course his play is well known to us today, but Arthur Brooke was the first one to actually produce the story in English. Now, his work is described as a free paraphrase of Matteo Bandello's Romeo and Juliet, which was written in, in Italian, by way of a French version. So, Brooke didn't do a straight translation from Bandello's Italian version, from the original Italian. He sort of based his on a French sort of work, a French translation of Bandello's work, so it was a bit sort of second-hand. Now, Brooke's version was written as Poulter's measure, um, a six stress line followed by a seven stress line with rhymed couplets. Whereas William Shakespeare's version of the story is written in blank verse. Um, there are quite a few differences between um, their, their, their poems, their plays. Um, another difference is the theme now, the British Library, um, in their uh, sort of article on uh, Brooks version, describe it as a gloomy cautionary message, a warning about the consequences of lust and ignoring your parents, with the consequence in this case being death. Whereas the theme of William Shakespeare's work, well, there is death in it as well, it's love to the death, a love that unites the uh, two feuding families, and this feud um, dies with Romeo and Juliet at the end of the play. 
Brooke's story also takes place over nine months, so it's much slower, whereas Shakespeare sort of sped up the story and his story of Romeo and Juliet is set over just five days, which is weird to think that all of that happened, all of Shakespeare's play happened in five days, from Romeo and Juliet first meeting, falling incredibly in love, and obviously the tragic end. No, no spoilers, obviously. There are also other differences, including Juliet's age. In Brooke's version, she's slightly older, she's 16, whereas uh, William Shakespeare's Juliet is just 14. But both uh, versions are set in the Italian city of Verona. Now, Brooke's work, um, Romeo and Juliet, or Romeo and Juliet, um, wasn't just used by William Shakespeare, it was also used by Bernard Garter and William Painter. Now, as I said, we don't know who Brooke is today. Well, some of us do, but the majority of people have heard of William Shakespeare, but they haven't heard of Arthur Brooke. But he was known, as I said, in his lifetime. Poet George Turberville, in his epitaph on the death of Master Arthur Brooke, drowned in passing to New Haven, refers to Brooke's authorship of Romeo and Juliet. He says, In proof that he for mitre did excel, as may be judged by Juliet and her maid, for there he showed his cunning passing well, when he the tale to English did translate. And it wasn't Brooke's only work. He also produced in 1563 a translation of a Huguenot work as well. Now, I'm going to give you a link to archive.org, which is a great place for reading old books out of copyright uh, books and sources. And you can read Arthur Brooke's version of the Romeo and Juliet story for yourselves on there. So I'll give you a link for that. But I just wanted to read you um, his final lines of his work and then read you Shakespeare's uh, final lines, just as a comparison. Okay, so let's start with Arthur Brooke. And lest that length of time might from our minds remove the memory of so perfect sound and so approved love. The bodies dead, removed from vault where they did die, in stately tomb on pillows great of marble raised they high. On every side above was set, and eat beneath, great store of cunning epitaphs in honour of their death. And even at this day the tomb is to be seen, so that among the monuments that in Verona been, there is no monument more worthy of the sight than is the tomb of Juliet and Romeus, her knight. So that was Arthur Brooke's version, and now we have William Shakespeare's final lines. A glooming peace this morning with it brings, the sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned and some punished, for never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. So you can see some some kind of uh, similarities there, but they are different. And you'll you'll notice the difference when you read uh, Brooke's version if you get around to it with the link that I give. So there you go. On this day in Tudor history, the death in 1563 of translator and poet Arthur Brooke in a shipwreck off the coast of East Sussex, a man that really should be remembered for his work. Um, it just seems rather unfair that we have forgotten his version of Romeo and Juliet today. I will be back tomorrow with another On This Day in Tudor History event. You can subscribe to the channel by just clicking round about there. Hit the bell to be notified and do leave a comment if you want to uh, say anything to me or just say hi. Anyway, take care. Bye bye.